It's Reverend Elizabeth Mora. It's Sunday and we're having some fun here. It's great to have you with us. Welcome to whether you are watching us online right now or whether you are watching this in the future and to everyone out there watching on live stream, which is everyone today. Welcome. So glad that you've joined Unity Northwest Church from Des Plaines, Illinois. I'm Reverend Elizabeth Mora and I'm thrilled to be the senior minister here at the church. And on behalf of all of us, happy Sunday. It's another warm spring day here in the fall of Chicago. I hope that you get out today. Maybe you get to enjoy one of the last dining out, al fresca, whatever it is that you're doing this Sunday. Welcome. I see that our names are popping in over on the side. It's great to see folks popping in <clears throat> on this Sunday morning. Welcome to all of you. And it's a great reminder every Sunday that you are the church. I am the minister that's standing here. We have a building, but the names that I'm popping by right now, these are the people that make up the church. Church is a body of people coming together to love each other, to hold sacred space together. And that's the truth of who you are. So thank you, grateful to have you here. And a special welcome, if you are a new time guest and this is your first time with us or perhaps your second time with us, want to let you know that we have a welcome packet for you. All you need to do is type unitynw at yahoo.com. That will go to our office and they will be able to send you some information and let you know a little bit more about our church so continue to keep in touch with us that way as well. Say hi in the chat box as we go along here. And I have a big surprise for us this morning. A little change up. I hope this makes this even more interesting, fun, and exciting. And I have a dear friend that is joining me today. Welcome, Chris Selvick. Let me unmute him. And you are with us. Chris, say hello. Good morning, everyone. Glad to uh, glad to be here. Uh, Are you I'm on mute? Ah, best sound live. Is that better? Not hearing you. I'm sure we can will in a now? minute. Let's see. Are you? I remember oh, on our. Um, can you hear me? Test call. You were muted on your microphone. I'll try muting you and unmuting you one more time. Oh shoot! No, it, this it, worked it, great it. in rehearsal. Everyone, Why hold you on. To know? Wait, 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 wait. It was perfect. Well, Okay, we'll so there. Chris is going to maybe log off and log back in. We'll give that a try. All right. All right. And when he comes back in, he is going to share with you. And in the meantime, oh, in the meantime, I am going to go ahead and do our opening prayer. I hope that you will join me in that. We now open this service with joy. We pray for all the technical issues <laughs> that may come up. And we know that divine order and wisdom is flowing through our service here today. Welcome to each one of you. You are in the divine right spot this Sunday morning. You are in the divine right spot whenever you are watching this. You have found your way here to a message of love and inclusivity and a place where we know that God, the principles, the laws, the love of truth and wisdom and light and joy, that that is the truth of who we are and what this world is. And as we all create more of heaven on earth by coming together on Sundays, by coming together for classes and by staying connected as this church community, we ripple out love and wisdom and joy to all beings everywhere. And so it is. Amen. Let me add Chris back in. Can you hear me now? We can. Oh, yes. All right. All right. Well, Wait. good morning, everyone. Good. Good morning, Chris. Tell them who you are. Well, I'm Chris Selvick and been with the church for a very long time. Um, a chaplain, although not today, next week. Uh, and I'm here to help out. 
Wonderful. So this is great. We've now got at least two faces for you to see here this morning. So, Chris, it's really great to see you. There you go. There you go. Excellent. Thank you. And yeah. now I'm going to turn it over to Chris to read the daily word for us this morning. Thank you, Chris. Sure. And I'm going, to, I'm going to figure out how to get you on solo layout. Ah, there we go. Oh, there you go. All right. So the, the daily word for today is healing. It's I embrace the healing flow of divine life. In my body, or if my body experiences any kind of health challenge, I turn within to release all fear and all concern as I affirm that illness is not a part of my true identity. I remember that wholeness is my birthright as a spiritual being. I surrender any anxiety as I fill my consciousness with healing thoughts. My mind's eye sees each cell of my body aglow with the energy of divine life. In prayer, I express appreciation for all my body's marvelous functions. I commit to taking time to bless my body with rest, exercise, and good nutrition. I speak affirming words of truth to encourage my body's healing response. I give thanks for the healing that I know is already on its way to me. I'm grateful to receive healing and no wholeness. And the Bible verses, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. And that's John 10.10. 10. Thank you, Chris. That was Welcome. wonderful to have you. And if you enjoyed having Chris on with us, go ahead and comment over in the uh, comment box. Give him a shout out. Let him know that you were glad that he was here. I know I am. And we're going to hear from you a little bit later as well. And even though I meant to start this, we're going to get caught up. Here we go. Just a couple of little flukes this morning. Nothing major. So thank you, Chris. I'm going to put you on mute and I will bring you back with us later. All right. And now let's go ahead and check in. You've been already doing it. You're also good at that. So pop over into the chat box if you like. Let us know who's here. And I'm going to give us a couple of uh, shout outs to see who else has joined. So we've got Tatiana who gave us our beautiful music. So glad to have you with us. Hi, Anne, Chris, Arturo. It's great to see Chris, he says. And Teddy's shouting out to Chris. Nicely done. Lots of praise. Yes. I know he adds such great energy. It's been fun having you with us. And we've got a few more check-ins here from Pat. Chris, Marilyn, it's always great to see you as it is everyone. Welcome again, Mark and Anita, Rod and Lori on a beautiful day. I couldn't agree more. And I think I've caught up with everybody so far. On this beautiful morning then, let us go ahead and move over into our time of meditation. So I invite you to go ahead and center yourself. Perhaps take those words from the daily word, from the opening prayer, from where you are, and perhaps take into your heart all the love that you feel knowing all of these wonderful individuals are on the phone, on the live stream with us right now. And now let us enter into this sacred time of meditation, as we call it this time, to reconnect to remember the truth that is never gone, but sometimes fades into the background. And let's bring that truth forward now. And so breathing in and breathing out. And once again, and out. I am open and willing in this moment to drop into the heart space of truth, to come back home into my divine nature. And as I connect into this perfect place, 
I relax and I lighten. I may even notice a vibration and energy. Yes, almost as if I am plugged in. I breathe and welcome the moment and welcome ease. My body is relaxed and alert. And my awareness is on what is right here, a noise, a sensation, a breath. Breathing in, breathing out. And when I step away from this, as soon as I remember, I am back in this present moment. The moment I'm aware of thinking or feeling, I'm already back into this present moment. Let me breathe in and out. And enjoy these moments of rest and reinvigoration from the connection into oneness, into truth. I rest in that silence. I'm so grateful for this relaxed state that I'm in, that this is the truth of who I am, always available, waiting with open arms to welcome me back into the truth. For this, for this time together with others, I am so blessed. Thank you, God. And so it is. Welcome to the day after election day. Wherever you are in this moment, I bless you. I know it's been an interesting time, if nothing else. So congratulations and condolences. And if the results somehow change, just take the sentiment and flip it around and take a different sentiment. And since we're all connected, there are condolences and there are congratulations for all of us because we're all connected. And I have love for everybody watching right now. I'm allowing space for all of it. Celebrations are important. So it is important if you are celebrating a candidate today, if you are celebrating President-elect Joe Biden and Kamala Harris as Vice President-elect, congratulations and celebrations. And if you are disappointed and discouraged that President Donald Trump was not reelected by all appearances right now, my heart goes out to you. And really all of us are able to do that because we have all had candidates that we wanted to win that didn't. And we've all experienced the celebration of our person won. So in a few days after the election here, my heart has been 
as much as possible going out to both to say celebrations. And even if there are candidates that didn't win that you were looking forward to, perhaps there are other candidates that did. And then of course, there's the bigger life. There's this world beyond politics, which I've forgotten about recently and have tried to remind myself about that this is a pinprick in a life full of tiny little dots, as I, talk, as I talk about. These tiny little dots of input that we get that are all out here and which ones we decide. I want to acknowledge that at this time there are some lawsuits being filed and so we don't fully know, yet it does seem that we do know. And so I also want to acknowledge that in this moment, at least as far as we know, history has been made. Whether Kamala was someone that you were supporting or not, that in the big picture of things that over a hundred years after gaining the vote, we have finally elected a woman into the highest land, highest offices of the land to vice president, not just a woman, a biracial woman. And she follows in the footsteps of so many before her, Geraldine Ferraro, Sarah Palin, Hillary Clinton, Jill Stein, all women that tiptoed and started to crack that glass ceiling. So today we celebrate for women. And we are still divided and raw and reeling. So now what? Many of us have been asking that question, of course. Now what? Now, how do we come together after what has seemed like such a divided time? Probably the most divided time in our lifetime, but certainly not in our country. We've had civil war. And one of the things I'm celebrating, and I hope you are too, is that it was a nonviolent week. I had some fear about that, and it was a nonviolent week. So where do we turn to today? Well, I know this is going to seem really strange to you, but I am actually going to turn to, and now I have flipped my, flipped myself out of, there we go. I'm gonna put it back in. You get to see the magic behind the scene here, right? Ah, uh, shoot. Give me just one second here to get myself in the right order. You have to click on these things in the very right order. So this is up. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're back on a slideshow. We are showing it. <laughs> and we've started at the beginning. So this is where I wanna be right now. There we go. We're going to start in an unlikely place this morning discussing what's happening in America after an election. I'm gonna take you to France for a moment. I wanna take you to a philosopher from France from the early part of the last century who has some words that may be helpful to us. Simone Weil, a philosopher who died tragically very young, 34, very influential in thought circles. And as her life went on, she became more and more religious and spiritual and got into mysticism. And she's not without controversy. I want to acknowledge that. But she influenced even Pope John Paul VI. He said that she was one of the top three influences in his life. And she wrestled deeply with the issues of how to be a patriot to her country, how to be in relationship with the outer world, and how to be a spiritual being. Sound like a paradox that anybody deals with regularly? All of us. How to be of this, in this world, but not of this world. And that's what we're talking about today, as we always do on some level. How are we managing what is in the physical realm and how are we managing what's inside of us? And she had this beautiful teaching that she came up with called compassionate patriotism. I'll let you take that in for a minute. The patriotism of compassion. That is a blending of two powerful com 
ideas that sometimes conflict how to be patriotic and to be compassionate. Oof. That's one for us to really work on. And this is how she put it. Patriotic compassion is to love your country as something beautiful and precious, but which is imperfect in the first place and frail and liable to suffer misfortune in the second place. And a country that it is necessary to cherish and preserve. Describes every country, describes how we are probably more aware of our country right now than perhaps we were before. How precious it is, how fragile it is. And the same thing is true of us, how precious you are and how fragile you are at times, how strong you are at times. Patriotic compassion. Compassion is one of the words that I come to most often when I say, whenever you're in suffering, whenever you are going through a loss or anything like that, a challenge, I like to say compassion first, metaphysics second. Compassion first. So especially right now, after this election, compassion for wherever you are at and anybody that I meet right now, not always easy, but compassion. You are suffering, you are struggling, you are relieved, you are excited. I share in that with you, I honor it in you, I see it in you, I see it in our country that we are all over the map, the range of emotions. And in any moment, that is always true, forgetting presidential elections. You could be having the best period of your life on top of your game, and your friend has lost their job or gotten divorced or gotten a diagnosis. And so we have compassion for all of that. We love and accept the celebration and our hearts go out to those who are suffering. That's the human journey over and over. Get that, repeat, forget it, repeat it, forget it, remember, come back again and again, again and again to embracing all of it. The winning, the losing, the celebrating, the condolences. It's all there for us. And next week, uh, the passage that has been also in my heart a lot probably is true for many of us. And it ended up uh, being true for the president-elect in his speech, which he stole from me, is a focus on Ecclesiastes and a time for everything. That we all experience everything and we go through these times and there is a place for all of that. And there is so much inspiration to be taken from scriptures. I also take inspiration from 1 Peter. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. What we're saying here is, Speak your truth, act your truth, live your truth. Always be prepared to give an answer. You can have convictions, convictions with compassion. So have your convictions and then the manner of how I am with that, gentleness and respect can be a guiding light for me. And right now, it feels especially appropriate, especially when we've come through something like this latest period. And I'm sure that things will continue because there are issues that remain. And we get to take a breather here and there to pause and reflect what has actually happened. Where am I actually at? And now that I've learned what I've learned, from whatever I take from this, now I can move forward with that. Pausing and reflecting right now are, are a good thing to do. 
And that's what Braver Angels is all about. The organization that I mentioned last week is one that I've been working with and following, and it's been stretching me and pushing my buttons, and that's okay. I need that a little bit, maybe a lot of bit. And so this is a group of people that are dedicated to doing this kind of work, finding a way across the divide completely balanced red and blue. And I want to uh, pop up a comment here from Sheila. Thank you. I knew there was someone I was forgetting and I didn't need to Google it because Sheila brought it up. It was in my heart and I didn't have time. So thank you. Let's not forget that Shirley ran for president as the first black woman in 1972. Thank you for the reminder. I really appreciate that you let us know that and so do several others. Okay, so braver angels, for those who are feeling ready to move forward, I know there are some of us here, so this is a time where an organization like braver angels can be really helpful to us because this is a group of people who have been working on this, are experts on this, and can guide us. Oh, and once again, I ended up back. <laughs> Here we go. So Braver Angels is the organization that brought forth this pledge that I thought was important. Regardless of how it turns out, well, it's turned out. Regardless of how this turned out, I will not hold hate, disdain, ridicule for those who voted differently. Whether I'm pleased or upset, I will seek to understand concerns and aspirations of those who are different and look for opportunities to work with people. There we are. There's our opportunity to work with people. And some of us will feel really excited about that and get right out there. And some of us need to ease into this. And some of us, our work is more on the prayer level, wherever it is for you. What we hold in our hearts right now is malice toward none. Malice toward none. And, and as I have been listening and watching people on the street, I've been hearing a lot of really impressive things from people. There was one shot that I saw of a, a rolling disco cart going through Philadelphia. And there was this woman, maybe some of you saw her, she had this kind of green hair. I don't know if it was a dye or a wig. And she was just getting into it. And they said she was a, a woman of color. And the reporter asked her, you know, how you feeling? And he's like, so what do you think about the results? And this was the perfect opportunity for her to celebrate, presumably, who she was excited about. And she said something like, it's not about that, man. <laughs> It's not about that. It's about oneness. It's about all of us. This is for all of us. And then she walked away. I thought, wow, that was really sweet that she did that. That it wasn't about the results right now. It was about hearts and coming together. And it was, you know, kind of like this little bit of a, <laughs> of a hippie love fest. And I thought that was really kind of sweet. And there's a prayer that Unity has put forth that I'd like to share with you as well from their video team. It's a little bit fuzzy, but let's take a listen to what Unity has to say. In this election time, we pray in the knowledge that all candidates are being called to the highest purpose to serve our cities, states, and nation with integrity, compassion, and commitment. We affirm wisdom and foresight for our leaders as they resolve challenges and help create prosperity and well-being for all people. We envision harmony, compassion, and inclusivity in all results. Together, we stand for truth, understanding, and peace. Remembering all that unites us, we are guided forward to lift the energy of our nation and allow love to triumph. And so it is. Amen.
prayer that we can all hold for all of us as we go through this. And we've had some nice comments I want to share over here. Um, Arturo says he's ready to move forward. And Jeanette has a really beautiful share here that being prepared to listen is not always easy. Absolutely. I think many of us are on the defensive and we want to be able to stand by our beliefs. And so when her students had a controversy, they had to repeat the opposing person said what they said. So they had to reflect back before presenting an opposing argument. It's also an interesting experiment to be assigned the opposing argument. That's what you do on debate team. So see if you can do that to find some compassion uh, for others. So some smiles and yes, me too. So take heart in that. I'm gonna keep coming back to this theme of compassion, compassion for ourselves as we all find a new way to move through this. That's our braver angels. That's the work of our braver angels. So up until the election, we were moving down one path of learning how to be with all of this. And now we're on another side of it. A change marks a change here. There is now a shift to now what is mine to do in this new environment where my candidate is not in office or my candidate is in office. How will I be? <laughs> How will I be? And I turn to another spiritual source as I was doing some research this week. And I got inspired by a prayer chaplain, a prayer chaplain for presidents. And Dr. Peter Marshall was the chaplain of the Senate back in the 40s. And I came across a beautiful prayer that we can hold for our president the current one, the president-elect, any president really that we can hold for any leader. We pray, Lord Jesus, for our president. We are deeply concerned that he may know the will of God, that he may have the spiritual courage and grace to follow it. Deliver him, we pray, from all selfish considerations. Lift him up above the claims of politics. Fill him with the spirit of God that shall make him fearless to seek, to know, to do the right. Save him from the friends who in the name of politics or friendship, persuade him from your holy path. Strengthen and empower his advisors, bring them too to their needs in prayer. May their example and their influence spread that we in the US may yet have a government of people who know thee, the almighty God is their friend and who place God's will first in their lives, as well as in their prayers. Amen. A prayer from 1947 for President Truman. A prayer for today. And insert yourself in that prayer for a moment, if you will. What we pray for the president, we really pray for ourselves as well. Save us from friends who in the name of politics or friendship would persuade us from our holy path. Strengthen and empower the people around us that influence us. Bring all of us to our knees in humble prayer to something bigger than we are. That's what God is, something bigger than we can ever comprehend that has the ultimate wisdom. That's what we wanna tap into. That is the braver angel of us to continue to be an angel wherever we can. And there are many angels out there right now. There are so many angels out there right now. And I've stumbled upon another one, an unlikely person perhaps, Maria Shriver. You would think that I'd be pulling from, you know, the Dalai Lama or someone at the moment. But right now I wanna to turn to something really sweet from Maria Shriver, a political, a child of politics, a wife of politics. So I think that she has something that can really touch us. And when I stumbled across this, it got to my heart and I thought, let's, let's listen to this braver angel from Maria Shriver. 
It's okay to not be okay today. I certainly wasn't okay when I went to bed. This was on Wednesday. I hit the hay too late, I ate too much. I know most of us have been confused, sad, angry, bewildered, and exhausted. We've been through a lot. And while we've been through it together, we have also gone through it on our own in a personal way. It's brought up so much for so many of us. Put your hand over your heart, feel it beating, close your eyes and breathe. Honor yourself for making it to this moment, for having made the effort to make your voice heard, even if you didn't get everything you wanted. Honor the fact you stepped up and were part of history. Think about that. For Maria, she says, election nights bring up so many emotions, so many memories, even some trauma. When I close my eyes and get still, I recall my very first election night in 1960. The adults were swirling, anxious, yelling. Everyone was high strung. I remember feeling stressed and anxious and afraid. We went to bed not knowing the outcome of the election. And when we woke up, my uncle had been elected president. That was a lot to take in as a child. And then I remember 1972, when my dad was vice president on the McGovern Shriver ticket. I remember standing on the stage when he conceded, looking and thinking, I hate politics and everything about it. I will never have anything to do with it again. It was brutally painful. Trust me, election nights are way deeper than balloons and confetti. So today I'm thinking about all those who have won and all those who have lost, and I thank them for stepping up into the arena. I'm thinking of their families who also go into the arena, whether they like it or not. I'm also thinking about all the emotions and how we begin to heal. Yes, heal. It takes time, trust me. You can't rush it, but you can set an intention to heal. You can set an intention to do your part, to look within and see what you can do to help the process of moving forward. That's my intention. Today, I'm going to look within. I'm going to honor the trauma that comes up, work with those emotions. For those who didn't vote the way I voted, I'm going to work on asking those feelings to step aside to make room for my higher self to lead. Yes, I'm going to ask my higher self to lead me forward. I need her today. I need her steadiness and her wisdom and her ability to rise up and her tenderness. I need the love of my higher self to dissolve any hate. Let's all do our part, bend, listen, stay open, because if we don't do our part to work towards unity, we'll descend into darkness and hate. We will inhabit the worst of ourselves. So today is about resting, reflecting, and resetting, setting an intention, honoring your wounds, and realizing others have them too. It's understanding that people worked really hard for different people and being still and quiet if we feel out of our minds. When I think back to those election nights, I wish someone had sat me down the day after, asked me about my anger, my sadness. I truly think if they had, I wouldn't have been mad so long. I wish someone sat with me to talk about how people that don't vote for you aren't the enemy, they're people. They're scared and have shame. And the beauty of our election is that we all have an equal say. So today be that person for someone, be that person for yourself, write down the story you wanna tell those who aren't here, write down the part and then write down your intention for our shared future. If it's a not a shared future, then I'm afraid we won't have one at all. As usual, it's up to us. As the Hopi poem says, we are the ones we have been waiting for. Now let's build what we've been waiting for and what we've worked for. Let's build what we deserve. Thank you, Maria Shriver.
I thought her perspective as a little girl watching wins and losses and seeing the stress and the energy of it all was important for us because I think that we all have some of that inside of us. I remember my parents being really worked up over the Carter election. I think they were against him. I can't even remember, but I remember my dad being really mad and stressed out. And then there's my own anger to deal with. So today we continue to deal with these emotions and let them lead us, let them guide us back into that place that we knew when we were meditating. And so our braver angels continue the work by doing things like putting yourself first with compassion and then having compassion for others, for nurturing, for resting and breathing, for praying. I know that I have had this brain working quite a lot. What to do, what to do, what to do. Oh, pray, center, get connected. And then my action is more inspired. So letting room for God, perhaps taking the pledge, signing it online through the Braver Angels organization that I've been talking about last week. BraverAngels.com. You can go there and find videos and discussions and pledges and prayers and everything you could use right now. Braver Angels is a set of Braver Angels for all of us. And finally, a last bit of inspiration from Maria. I know this week has been challenging, so let's challenge ourselves to see it as an opportunity for renewal for our own hearts and minds and our countries. May we each commit to come together to reach out to another to not gloat in our victory, nor harden in our defeat, but instead to seek ways to recommit to our shared future. Let us follow our hearts. Trust me, it will never steer us wrong. Trust your heart, my braver angels. Searching for each other All angels who cannot reach the sky Cause we need each other to fly Do you know there are angels in our midst? Can you hear them? Can you feel them? They're all around you, with you every day. Do you see them or do you look the other way? It's that man that I forgot to kiss as I hurried out the door. Or that stranger that said hello. That I ignore, they are angels. They are angels. We are angels. We are all angels who only have one wing. All angels searching for each other. All angels who cannot reach the sky. Cause we need each other to fly My life gets so busy, time goes by so fast I rush through the day trying to make each moment last When I take the time to look around I see Sweet angels smiling back at me. 
everywhere at any time I need to open up my eyes and see the beauty that surrounds me now I realize we are angels we are angels we are angels we are all angels who only have one way all angels Searching for each other All angels Who cannot reach the sky Cause we need each other To fly 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 we need each other We need each other to fly. I wanted to pop back and say a special hello to Susan. Susan, thank you for being with us. We were so grateful to have you with us. And we honor the memory of your mom as well. You know she's here with us as well. It is now time to remind ourselves of how lucky we are and how blessed we are to be here in a church community like this. If you're like me and you love your church, now is the time when you can take a moment to put that into physical action by giving back into the community. I call this investing in your spiritual 401k. As a church that is not supported by any outside organizations, we're grateful to you for putting into the community what you will get out of it. Thank you for your giving today. And as we all take our donations in our hand, let us say our blessing together. And whether you have given online by going up top and clicking the donate button, sending in a check, dropping by cash, or giving by credit card on our webpage in whatever way you give, we now consciously bless that offering together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. And for our upcoming events, we're going to bring Chris back on with us. Welcome back, Chris. It's good to see you. Are we hearing? Oh, I've got a... Yeah. I, I had to take myself off mute. Yes. Okay, great. Well, it's been wonderful having you with us today. And thank you for turning. Oh, I'm going to turn over the, uh, I'm going to turn over the announcements to you now. So Chris, take it away. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, first of all, thanks for all your comments in the chats. I uh, look forward to the day that I can see and hug all of you. So uh, upcoming events. So we've got the 12 powers class. Uh, we all possess a system of divine attributes, which Charles Fillmore called the 12 powers. And so we're going to get in depth with those and, and see how we can use those in our lives. That class starts on Wednesday, November 11th, which is Veterans Day, and goes to December 6th. Um, and there's, uh, if you want more information about that, you go to the website to find the link and, um, and enjoy the class. It'll be a great class. Also, uh, don't miss out on anything going on with Unity Northwest. Uh, just, just text the word CONNECT to 847-908-5100. And once or twice a week, you'll get a quick text from the church just letting you know what's going on and where it's happening. And then you may, if you're on the, the, uh, the church uh, mailing list, you would have received the newsletter in the mail. If you want to continue to receive the newsletter in the mail, uh, Email the church at uh, unity and, and what is it? It's usually across the top or across the page, but 
email the church and they'll, they'll continue on the list. It's a great newsletter. Thanks to Ruth and all her dedication and work to put this thing together. Oh, there's the email address. All Sorry right. about that. I was slow on the draw. Oh, it's okay. And what's really great about it is that um, everything I'm talking about is in the newsletter and it goes into great detail about it as well. And then, uh, you know, with the CARES Incentive Act, you know, especially this year with, with everything going on and, and everyone in such turmoil, um, this is a great time to pay it forward. And uh, you can deduct up to $300 for a charitable giving contribution in 2020. That's 600 bucks per couple if you're, if you're um, putting your taxes in joint. Um, in addition, and that's in addition to the standard deduction. And for those of you who like to itemize things, which I have no idea what, what happens with that, you can deduct donations up to 100% of your 2020 adjusted gross income for cash gifts to charity. So great time to, to tithe and, um, yeah, and deduct it. And then some reminders, uh, read our weekly e-blasts. You know, we get those in, in email. Uh, we've got videos of the services on YouTube. Feel free to donate anytime and really just stay safe out there so that, you know, it, sooner or later we will all get together and have one big hug fest. And again, it was great being a part of this today. We'll see you next week. Uh, there is a, the, the, the theme for next week is a season for everything. And of course, don't forget about the, uh, uh, the fellowship after the, the service today. You can, if you look on somewhere on the page here, they're above, uh, above me or to the side, there's a new link for that. It's on Zoom, or you can find it on the website, but join us afterwards for that as well. And of course, that's where, if you'd like to pray with a chaplain, um, that's where you're going to get the chance to, to pray with them. It's really kind of neat if you haven't done it yet. Um, it's on Zoom, so the, it's a special breakout. So when you're praying with your chaplain, it's just you and the chaplain. So, and that's the announcements for today. Again, uh, great being a part of this and uh, hope to see everyone soon. Big round of applause for Chris. Oh my gosh, this was a delight to have you there. I just keep love doing this. I just think the, it's right, wait, yeah, we got it this time. Right, wait, there we go. Yeah, it was really great to see you. I just think great that's seeing you too. <laughs> I know you're all laughing really big out there. Again, uh, thank you for taking care of all the announcements for you. And my final announcement is always to remind you of the truth that you're fabulous, you're wonderful, you're stupendous, you're beautiful, you're gorgeous, you're real, you're vulnerable, you're human, you're all those things. So please join us over in fellowship and join us on Wednesday for that class that starts. It's a way to take the teaching deeper. And I think that those 12 powers are going to come in really handy in the coming weeks. So come and learn how to really use them. Thanks, everyone. God bless. <laughs>